हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू थ्री सिक्सटी वर्ल्ड ट्रिप अ चैनल वेर आई टेक यू ऑन एन इमर्सिव थ्री सिक्सटी एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ लोकेशन अराउंड द वर्ल्ड टूडे लेट मी टेक यू टू एन आइकॉनिक प्लेस इन डेली कुतुब मीनार कुतुब मीनार लोकेटेड इन द कुतुब कॉम्प्लेक्स इन डेली इंडिया is one of the most iconic and historically significant monuments in the country it was built during the early 13th century and its construction initiated by qutub uddin abak the first sultan of delhi in 1193 the construction of qutub minar reflects a transition from the earlier architecture style of hindu and jain temples to indo islamic architecture style The minaret's architecture blends elements of Indian and Persian style, resulting in a unique structure. Qutbuddin Abak began the construction of the minaret, but it was completed by his successor Iltutmish in 1220. The Qutb Minar is a five-story tower with a height of 72.5 meters, making it one of the tallest minarets in the world. The tower is made of red sandstone and marble creating a striking contrast with the surrounding landscape. The intricate carvings on the sandstone surfaces depict verses from the Quran, calligraphy and ornate geometrical designs. These inscriptions serve as a testament to the religious and cultural significance of the monument. In addition to being a victory tower the Qutb Minar was also used for a call to prayer azan by the muezzin the balconies on the minaret were likely used for this purpose where the muezzin would stand and call the faithful to prayer before the qutb minar the site was home to several hindu and jain temples when the muslim rulers took control of the region Many of these temples were dismantled and the stone from these structures were repurposed for the construction of the minaret and the surrounding complex. The Qutb Minar complex holds immense historical significance. It represents the fusion of different architectural styles and serves as a testament to the cultural diversity of India over the centuries. Now, let's head over to Alai Minar. The Alai Minar is an incomplete historical monument located within the Qutb Minar complex in Delhi, India. It was commissioned by Alauddin Khilji, the second ruler of the Khilji dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate in the early 14th century. The Alai Minar was intended to be a massive tower, similar in the style to the Qutb Minar but even larger. The Alai Minar was intended to be much larger than the Qutb Minar which stands nearby. Alauddin Khilji aspired to build a tower that would surpass the Qutb Minar in height and grandeur. However, the construction was never completed and the Alai Minar remains in an unfinished state. Like the Qutb Minar, the Alai Minar was constructed as a victory tower. to commemorate Alauddin Khilji's military victories it was constructed using red sandstone similar to Qutb Minar and featured intricate carvings and inscriptions the base of the tower which still exists is adorned with decorative panels now let's head over to the tomb of Iltutmish the tomb of Iltutmish is a historical monument located adjacent to the Qutb Minar it is a significant architecture structure and a mausoleum that honors the memory of Iltutmish who was the most important ruler of the Delhi Sultanate his full name was Shamsuddin Iltutmish he was the third ruler of the Delhi Sultanate and he reigned from 1211 to 1236 Iltutmish was a prominent figure in medieval Indian history and played a key role in consolidating and expanding the sultanate's rule. 
he is best known for his administrative and military achievements. Iltutmish is often credited with stabilizing the Delhi Sultanate, centralizing its administration and expanding its territorial boundaries. He successfully defended the Sultanate against external threats and internal rebellions, which help establish a more stable and lasting rule. During his reign, he also faced challenges from various regional and provincial rulers. The tomb of Iltutmish is an architectural marvel that reflects the Indo-Islamic style of its time. It is one of the earliest examples of a true Islamic tomb in the Indian subcontinent. The dome is supported by an octagonal drum and is adorned with intricate calligraphic inscriptions. Inside the tomb chamber, the cenotaph of Iltutmish is placed, although the actual burial place of the ruler is believed to be in the chamber beneath the structure. Now, let's head over to Sultan Alauddin Khilji tomb and Madarsa. The tomb of Alauddin Khilji, another important structure within the complex, is a beautiful reminder of his rule. It is surrounded by a Madarsa, an Islamic educational institution. It commemorates the reign of Alauddin Khilji, the second ruler of the Khilji dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate, who ruled from 1296 to 1316 Common Era. The tomb of Sultan Alauddin Khilji is a central structure in the complex. It is a significant historical monument. Although its architectural style is relatively simple compared to some other tombs in the region, the tomb is constructed of red sandstone and is a square building with a flat roof. It doesn't feature a dome which is a departure from a typical architectural style of the time. The lack of a dome is one of the distinctive characteristics of this tomb. The exterior of the tomb is adorned with ornate, calligraphic inscriptions in Arabic which are a common feature of Islamic architecture. These inscriptions are both decorative and hold historical and religious significance. Inside the tomb, there are no remains or cenotaphs as Alauddin Khilji was buried elsewhere. The interior is a simple plain chamber. Adjacent to the tomb, there is a madarsa which was an Islamic educational institution. The madarsa was built during Alauddin Khilji's rule and is a significant part of the complex. Key points about madarsa include First, the madarsa is built in the Indo-Islamic architectural style and consists of a rectangular courtyard surrounded by a series of rooms and cells for students and teachers. The courtyard typically features a central water tank for ablutions and a prayer hall. Madarsas in medieval Islamic society served as centers of learning where students studied various Islamic subjects including theology, law, philosophy and the Quran. These institutions played a crucial role in the dissemination of knowledge and propagation of Islamic education. Now, let's head over to Khalji's Madarsa and Kuatul Islam Masjid. The complex also includes Khalji's Madarsa, which was constructed by Alauddin Khilji, and the Kuatul Islam Masjid, which was one of the earliest surviving mosques in India. The Kuatul Islam Mosque, also known as Kutub Mosque, is one of the earliest mosques in India and it was built by Kutubuddin Abak. The Kuatul Islam Mosque is also known for its early Indo-Islamic architectural style. It was constructed using materials from demolished Hindu and Jain temples, which give it a unique blend of Hindu and Islamic architecture elements. The mosque is adorned with intricate calligraphic inscriptions in Arabic which includes Quranic verses and other religious texts. 
these inscriptions are notable for their decorative and historical value. The mosque's distinctive features is a series of reused columns and pillars from the earlier temples with ornate carvings that depict various Hindu deities. Now, let's head over to Iron Pillar. It stands in the Qutub Minar complex in Delhi. The exact purpose of the pillar remains a subject of scholarly debate. The pillar is made of wrought iron and is approximately 7.2 meters in height. It has a diameter of 40 cm at its base and tapers to 30 cm at the top. It is estimated to weigh around 6.5 tons. One of the most astounding features of the iron pillar is its resistance to rust. Despite being exposed to the elements for over a millennium and a half, the pillar has not corroded like most other iron objects. The reason for its resistance has been the subject of scientific research and debate. The iron pillar bears an inscription in Sanskrit written in Brahmi script. The inscription credits the pillar's construction to King Chandra, who is thought to be Chandragupta II of the Gupta dynasty. The inscription also mentions a battle victory, but the exact details remain unclear. The unique metallurgical properties of the pillar have fascinated scientists and researchers. It is believed that iron used in the pillar was highly pure, with low levels of impurities such as sulphur and phosphorus. The presence of the thin layer of iron hydroxide corrosion may have contributed to its rust resistance. The iron used in the pillar is unusually pure, with a carbon content of less than 0.1%. This level of purity was not common in ancient iron production techniques. Despite numerous studies and investigations, the exact method used to create the iron pillars rust resistance iron remains a subject of ongoing research and debate. Various theories suggest that a combination of high quality iron ore, efficient smelting techniques and a unique heat treatment process may have been employed. The pillar was originally located in Udayagiri and was later moved to its current location in the 10th century. It is believed that regular maintenance, including the application of protective coating, has helped preserve the pillar. The iron pillar is not only an engineering marvel but also holds historical significance as it is associated with the Gupta dynasty, one of the India's most influential and culturally vibrant periods. As you explore the Qutub Minar complex, you can't help but be awed by the historical layers it holds. From the destruction of temples to the architectural wonders of the Delhi Sultanate, this site stands as a testament to India's rich past. I I hope you enjoyed this 360 degree exploration of Qutub Minar and its historical significance. Please remember to respect and preserve this heritage as we continue to cherish the history it represents. Thank you for joining me on a tour of the Qutub Minar. Do like and leave a comment as it helps YouTube push my videos to more audience. I will be uploading more videos, so do subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps small content creators like me to grow. Hit the bell icon to receive updates on a new video and keep exploring the world through 360 World Trip. I will see you in my next video.